Bridge YouTube, it's your girl Asia. And it's your boy BJ, and, and we, we back, back like we, we never, never left. left. Thank you guys for pulling up, tuning back in. Welcome to the wonderful world of Asia and BJ. We're going to be checking out Fargo tonight. This is from 1996. Uh, we also got to give a shout out to one of our VIP supporters too as well. Shout out to Ross. Absolutely okay. <laughs> for making this suggestion. I've seen the name Fargo. I've never seen the movie. Yeah. I don't know what it's about. It kind of looked familiar, but then I, the I know I've never watched the movie before. So, yeah. so same. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. I'm excited. I know. It's always like, like I said before, it's like these these movies that we've not seen or heard of before that be like, yeah, because it's totally because, <laughs> because it's totally unexpected. You haven't yeah. heard of it, so you don't you don't even know who's acting in it, right? What it's about, any of those things. Nothing. So yeah, like I said, it's just a total surprise, and I'm excited tonight. Same, same, y'all. So make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. Y'all can tap into the Patreon and check out all of our unedited, uncut videos, behind the scenes Absolutely. footage. Patreon polls and access to all of our TV series as well, all over on Patreon. And all of that said, let's go ahead and jump into this video. It's time yeah. to dibble and dabble, absolutely. This is a true story. The events depicted in this film took place in Minnesota in 1987. At the request of the survivors, the names have been changed out of respect for the dead. The rest has been told exactly as it occurred. Is this a scary movie? I didn't look to see if it was what the what the genre was. There's the name, Bushimi. Bushimi? It's giving me like an eerie vibe. I said Minnesota, so you know that. I've never been to Minnesota, Minnesota before. Mm -hmm. I would love to go. But I always, everybody tell me like when it snows, it snows. Oh yeah, it throws down. Oh, North Dakota. I should have known that. <laughs> I thought Minnesota. Is Minnesota next to South Dakota? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I believe so. You got the car? Yeah, you bet. It's out in the lot there. Brand new burnt umber Sierra. Yeah, okay. Well, sit down then. I'm Carl Showalter. This is my associate, Gare Grimsrud. <laughs> He's sleep. Shep vouched for you and all. I got every confidence here in you fellas. The cigarette's still burning. He still smoke. <laughs> it's all worked out. You want your own wife kidnapped? Yeah. I mean, you give us half the ransom, 40,000, you keep half. It's like robbing Peter to pay Paul. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. See, it's not me paying the ransom. The thing is, my wife, she's wealthy. Her dad, he's real well off. Mm. See, I just need the money. Now, her dad, he's real well off. So, why don't you just ask him for the money? Or your fucking wife, you know. Or your fucking wife, Jerry. Well... It's all part of this. They don't know I need it. Mm. Oh, fuck it. Let's take a look at that Sierra. I recognize both of them. Yeah, what though? Maybe maybe he's into like gambling. Because 1987, 80,000 is a lot of money. Oh, it's Fargo? Yeah, real good. The yeah, it's here. Oh, what a surprise. He's staying for supper then? Yeah, I think so. Dad? What? Are you staying for supper? Yeah. I don't think he's too fond of his father-in-law. At least I don't think so. Yeah. Wade, have you had a chance to think about um, that deal I was talking about, those 40 acres there in Wyzetta? What did you say we're going to put there? A lot. It's a, a limited... No, it's a lot. Uh, I mean, a parking lot. Ah, well, 750000 is a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a chunk, but... Uh, I had a couple I think... lots, late 50s, lost a lot of money. A lot of money. This could work out real good for me and Gene and Scotty. Gene and Scotty never have to worry. <laughs> not not me. You got the grandkids, Gene and Scotty? I guess. He said Gene and Scotty never have to worry. I almost sound like he's trying to get some money out of them. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for some parking lots is a lot. We stop at Pancakes House. What are you nuts? We have pancakes for breakfast. Gotta go to a place where I can get a shot and a beer and steak, maybe. Not more fucking pancakes. Come on. Hey, sound like a plan to me. Saying we can stop, get pancakes, and then we'll get laid. All right. 
He was in some other movie. I just don't, I just can't. He does look connect familiar. Connect the dots. Look how old those cars are. Those are new cars. 87 for sure, baby. You're talking like we didn't go over this already. Yeah, but this true code. We had a deal here for 19.5. You sat there and darn if you didn't tell me you'd get me this car, these options, without the ceiling for 19.5. All right, I'm not saying I didn't. You called me 20 minutes ago and said you had it ready to make delivery. It says, come on down and get it. And, 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 and here you are, and you're wasting my time and my wife's time, and, and I'm paying 19.5 for this vehicle here. F and I, guys. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> they do that every single time. 19.5 out the door. They install that true code at the factory. There's nothing we can do. But I'll, I'll talk to my boss. That's just that pack they be trying to add on and stuff. It's always the same. It's always more. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You gotta love it. He says I can knock $100 off that true code. <laughs> he didn't go talk to nobody. You're a bald faced liar. Fucking face. Uh, Fucking liar. Oh, oh. please. Where's my goddamn checkbook? Let's get this over with. He finna pay for it, but he is mad. So you don't want to do your customers like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Lungard, I don't know. He, I don't think he flying straight. Something going on with him. Stan Grossman looked at your proposal. He says it's pretty sweet. No kidding. Might be interested. No kidding. Uh, I, I need the cash pretty quick there in order to close the deal. Come by at 2.30, we'll talk about it. If your numbers are right, Stan says it's pretty sweet. Stan, you know, gross one. Yeah. It's on and popping. But make sure the numbers is right. <laughs> see this deal I needed them for? I may not need it anymore. Something's happening, see? Call him up? Yeah, well, see, I did that. And I haven't been able to get them, so I thought maybe you'd know an alternate number. I would have you. Nope. Okay. Well, I'll look at them. My uncle used to have one just like that. That, yeah, he that can't dark get out bluish of there. one. Nope. No. He already made the deal. Yeah. I just need on these last, uh, these financing documents that you sent us, I can't read the serial numbers of the vehicle. Yeah, but I, I already got the, it's okay. The loans are in place. I already got the, the, what, the... Yeah, the uh, 320000 You got the money last month. Yeah, so we're all set then. Yeah, but the vehicles that you're borrowing on, I, I just can't read the serial numbers on your application. Mm. We have an audit here. I just have to know that these vehicles you're financing with this money, that they really exist. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, no problem. I'll just fax that right over no, no, to no, you. No, 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 no. Fax it. I mean, send it over. I'll shoot it right over uh, to you. He not doing that. Mm. Some kind of way he bamboozled with, the manufacturer. With the serial numbers. All <sighs> the dazzle eggs ourselves at home. Now, Katie, I got to admit. What? I was a little... Oh, shit. Unguent. What? I need unguent. When I tell you that would terrify me. No. They better knock that door down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, get out the window, get out the window. We never talked about your fee for bringing it to us. No, but Wade, see, I was bringing you this deal for you to loan me the money to put in. It's my deal here, see. Jerry, we thought you were bringing us an investment. Yeah, right. Well, you're saying, what are you saying? Give him all the money. Well, Jerry, we're not gonna just give you $750,000. What the heck were you thinking? <coughs> if I'm only getting bank interest, I want complete security. Heck, FDIC. I don't see nothing like that here. It's not insured. 
If you're not interested, you won't mind if we move on it. Independently. Damn, his wife fell down the stairs. No. It sounded like he tried I thought to do she something went out, real crooked. Definitely. I thought she went out the window and he was looking at, back at the shower curtain like, I think she wanted us to think she went out the window. That's a lot of money, 750 k I think he took a fraud loan like he did something fraudulent to try to get a loan out on those cars. At the dealership and stuff because they're talking about that 320 He got it from the manufacturer, but the manufacturer paid the dealership and, and, and those cars probably were stolen or hot cars. So they paid them for that money, for the money that they. And at the beginning, he gave them a he he, he gave them a car too. So like you said, he probably has like three hundred twenty thousand and just fraudulent loans, basically, because yeah. he because he don't have the actual theory. Numbers yeah, because when you them. take out a floor plan from a dealership, the manufacturer pays the dealership, and they pay that money back. So, so now he in bigger mess because he was going to use his wife to get money. <laughs> but she died. So now it's like... Oh, no. Oh. Get him. I never put my tags on the car. Mm. This was the car that he brought them. Oh, look like he already writing the ticket. Or running the plates. All right, just, just keep it still back there, lady, or else we're going to have to, you know, to shoot you. I think the I think they amateur criminals. Uh-oh, here he come. I hope he see her in the back seat. Me too. So maybe the best thing to do would be to take care of that right here in Brainerd. <laughs> Give him $50. What's this, sir? My license and registration. Trying to bribe them off. Get out of the car. Put that back in your pocket, please. And step out of the car, please, sir. Mm -hmm. They look guilty all day. Oh. Look, it's all on his chin. Oh. All on his face. Just clear him off the road. Yeah. I mean, I guess add him to the pile when he clear him off the road. Golly. I think we're starting to see who the real criminal is. Right? I was saying they amateur criminals. They kill us. Oh! You have got to be kidding me. No way. Did they go off the road or did they just get the like they went off the road. Oh, and they're trying to get out. They better get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Or oh, y'all gonna be target practice. No. Oh man. Right in the center. I take it that he's done this before. Triple homicide. Yeah, I take that back. He's not an amateur. You can sleep. It's early yet. I gotta go. Yeah. I'll fix you some eggs. Uh -huh, and you can sleep. <laughs> I'll fix you some eggs. Oh, my God. <laughs> you gotta get that out of your system as soon as you wake up. But you gotta spit it in the toilet, though. Time to shove off. Did you swallow that? Love you, Margie. <laughs> Love you, Margie. <laughs> yeah, she the police. <laughs> Brainerd police. So what's the deal now? 
Gary says triple homicide? Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Two of them are over here. Where is everybody? Well, it's cold, Margie. <laughs> Watch your step, Margie. This the police? You see the, uh, she must be like a crime scene investigator. So we got a trooper pull someone over. We got a shooting. <laughs> These folks drive by. There's a high-speed pursuit. Ends here, and then this execution type deal. Damn. Shut and close. You okay, Margie? Yeah, I'm fine. She's looking at foot, the footprints, I guess. It's just morning sickness. Hmm. Well, that passed. Yeah? Yeah, now I'm hungry again. <laughs> now she's actually hungry again. Mmm. There's different footprints here, Lou. Damn. Last vehicle he rode in was a tan Sierra at 2.18 a.m. Under a plate number, he put DLR. I figured they stopped him or shot him before he could finish filling out the tag number. Uh-huh. So I got the state looking for a Sierra with a tag starting DLR. They don't got no match yet. I'm not sure that I agree with you 100% on your police work there, Lou. They didn't have no tag. I think that vehicle there probably had dealer plates. DLR. Well, as careless as they are, she's smart. <laughs> Man, she's smart as a whip, though. Yeah, she is. You, you gotta listen to me on this one, Wade. Heck, you don't know. You're just whistling Dixie here. I'm saying the cops. They can advise us on this. I'm saying call a professional. No, no cops. Hmm. I really think we should call the cops here. No, no. No one can know about this thing. We gotta play ball with these guys. Yes, Stan Grossman, he'll tell you the same thing. Yeah, but did <laughs> We're gonna get mom back for you, but we gotta play ball. Look, you got a white snake poster. Yeah, on the see. wall. <clears throat> if Lorraine calls, or Sylvia, you just say mom's down in Florida with Pearl and Marty. Man, even Lana Scotty. Wonder what he needs this money for so badly. What we was talking about. Gambling? No, I don't think it's the gambling. I think oh, it's the dealership, the probably. I think so, yeah. Because the, because that's not going to go away, you know? Why would you even get yourself into some sort like... I just think he's a con man to that's some degree. stupid. Yeah. Please don't hurt yourself any more than you already hurt yourself. Please. Oh. She about to run into that tree. Oh God. No. Oh, no. <laughs> they better get her before she hurt herself. This is so bad. Hiya, hon. I brought you some lunch, Margie. <laughs> Margie. What are those, night crawlers? Yeah. Oh, thanks, hon. You bet. Thanks for lunch. Oh. Oh. You got Arby's all over me. Arby's. I can't stand Arby's. <laughs> I could never eat Arby's. Me either. Mm -mm. Two men checked into the Blue Ox, registering a Sierra and leaving a tag space blank. Geez, that's a good lead. Yeah. Blue Ox, that's that trucker's joint out there on I-35? Yeah. Owner was on the desk then. Said these two had company. Oh, yeah. 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 I want you to tell me what these fellas look like. Well, the little guy, he was kind of funny looking. In what way? I don't know, just funny looking. <laughs> Can you be any more specific? I couldn't really say. He wasn't circumcised. He said he wasn't circumcised. Hey, they said they were going to the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, is that useful to you? Oh, you betcha, yeah. 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 <laughs> Darn tootin'. This is Mike Yanagita. You know, Mike Yanagita, remember me? M My Yanagita? Yeah! Well, yeah. Of course I remember you. How, how are you doing? What time is it? Oh, jeez. Uh, it's a quarter to eleven. Uh, I hope I didn't wake you. No. That's okay. Yeah, I'm down in the Twin Cities, uh, and I was just watching on TV about these shootings up in Brainerd, and I saw you on the news there. Yeah. I thought, jeez, is that Margie Olmstead? I can't believe it. 
I can give it to you with a heck of a sealant. This true coat stuff, it'll keep this all tall. Yeah, I don't need no sealant though. <laughs> Nobody ever does, do they? <laughs> Everybody always turn down the ceiling. That true code, whatever it is. Things have changed. Circumstances, Jerry, beyond the uh, acts of God, force majeure. What the? <laughs> the price went up. We now want the entire 80,000. Oh, for Christ's sake, here. Blood has been shed. We've incurred risks, Jerry. I'm coming to the town tomorrow. You have the money ready. You're not gonna be now, we had a deal here. A deal's a deal. Uh... Hey, but Jerry. You ask those three poor souls up in Brainerd if a deal's a deal. Go ahead, ask them. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Right. It's Riley Diefenbach at GMAC. Sir, I've not received those vehicle IDs you promised. Yeah, I... <laughs> those are in the mail. That very well may be. I must inform you, however, that absent the receipt of those numbers by tomorrow afternoon, I will have to refer this matter to our legal department. Two bad phone calls in a row. Whatever this big mastermind plan he had, it, it is not going according to plan. Not at all. Where they at? Is that Golden Corral? I don't know, but it just show look edible right now. I don't know. It looked a little questionable. <laughs> I love it. Look, she getting a little bit of everything. That's how you do it, right? Four ninety nine buffet, baby. All you can eat. Oh yeah. That, oh, that's definitely like Golden Corral back yeah. in eighty seven. <laughs> Low <Lobies. laughs> <laughs> Him on a, this guy, he looks familiar too. I've yes, seen he it. Does. Yeah. Calls made from the lobby payphone at the Blue Ox. Two to Minneapolis that night. Mm. First one's a trucking company, and second one's a private residence, a Shep Proudfoot. Okay. Yeah. I think I'll take a drive down there then. Oh, yeah? Twin Cities. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want my money, they can deal with me. Otherwise, I'm going to a professional. No, see... There's a million dollars here. No, see... Look, Jerry, you're not selling me a damn car. It's my show here. That's that. It's the way we'd prefer to handle it, Jerry. Okay. Suit yourself. Look at he looking. He looking worried. I'm Mrs. Gunderson. I have a reservation. Yep, you sure do, Mrs. Gunderson. Is there a phone down here, you think? Yeah. What is he doing? I don't know. Look like about to get stuck in the snow. Back in 1987, those were some nice cars. Really? Yeah. Popular. Oh, he's still on the license plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see? I just fucking pulled in here. Well, but see, there's there's a minimum charge of $4. No matter what. There's your $4, you pathetic piece of shit. Where's Shep? Talking to a cop. Cop? Yeah, a cop. Oh! So do you remember getting a call Wednesday night? Oh, that's Shep. It's just hard for me to believe you don't remember anyone calling. Now, I know you've had some problems. Struggling with the narcotics, some other entanglements, currently on parole. Hmm. Now, I saw some rough stuff on your priors, but nothing in the nature of a homicide. I know you don't want to be an accessory to something like that. So, you think you might remember who those folks were who called you? Yeah, um... Yeah? What you want to know? <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> Wonder what he said. She, she got him dead to right. Mr. Lundegaard? Uh-oh. Oh. Do you mind if I sit down? Carrying quite a load here. You're the owner here, Mr. <clears throat> Lundegaard? Nah, I, executive sales manager. Well, you can help me. My name's Marge Gunderson. My father-in-law. He's the owner. Oh. And I was just wondering if you'd had any new vehicles stolen off the lot in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brainerd. Yeah. Yeah. Home of Paul Bunyan, Babe the Blue Ox. Babe the Blue Ox. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can't talk your way out of this one. Or smile your way out. It's so crazy because she's so, like, nice appeal. But very straightforward. Okie dokie, thanks a bunch. I'll let you get back to your paperwork then. Mm. <laughs> Only probably half the, the, the lot is stolen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you stepped in the big pile of doo-doo. And you can't get it off your shoe. March? Jeez. <laughs> oh, 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 you look great. Yeah, so do you. Oh, easy there, easy there. Easy there, easy there. You do too. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, uh, I was married. Uh, I, I was married to... You mind if I sit over here? Uh, I was married to Linda Cooksey. No, why don't you sit over there? I prefer that. <laughs> Cross the table. Uh, okay. Look how she looking, though. She like... I, I, I didn't mean to... Uh... No, no. That's fine. Of course not. Uh, Linda uh, had leukemia, you know. Uh, she was... Uh... She, she passed away. Oh, no. Oh, better times, huh? Better times. Oh, and, and then I saw you on the TV, and uh, I remembered, you know, I always liked you. Well, I always liked you. I always much. liked you so much. I need him to find something to do. <laughs> Look at you cheesing. <laughs> uh, should we get together another time, you think? No, I... I I've been so lonely. It's okay, Mike. Calm down, Mike. A bit of a creepazoid. Definitely. <laughs> he he didn't he tried to move went way too fast. Why would she meet him though? You know, high school friends, I don't know. Are you from around here? Just in town on business. Just in and out. Just a little of the old in and out. Just like the burger. What do you do? Uh, I... Contracts. Kidnap people. <laughs> I'm hearing bells. How am I? Huh? All right. Well, where are you? Huh? <laughs> huh? Trying to find you. Shep, what the hell are you doing? I'm banging that girl. Oh, oh there's Shep. Hey, smoke a fucking peace pipe. What? Oh, look at his eyeballs. Fucking little weasel. Now he get a whooping. <laughs> he turned him, to a, turned him into a little kid. Golly. You're there in 30 minutes where I find you, Jerry, and I shoot you, and I shoot your fucking wife, and I shoot all your little fucking children, and I shoot them all in the back of their little fucking heads. You got it? Okay, now you stay away from Scotty now. Got it? Okay, real good then. Wade not playing. He finna do this himself. And now they got this music playing. It's gonna get real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, goddamn. Punk. This is not gonna get ugly. This is gonna get ugly. Where's my damn daughter? No Jean, no money. Drop that fucking money! No Jean, no money. Is this a fucking joke here? First, the way that Wade fell down, I thought he might have had a vest on, like it didn't go through. Now it's four people all because of him. Wow. All because of him. This is crazy. It was already bad. Now it went much for worse. Oh, it's five people. He just a parking attendant. He was, only supposed, he was only supposed to get like 80,000. That was a million. I mean, I assume that's what was in the briefcase. This little guy's drinking and he says, so where can a guy find some action? I'm going crazy out there at the lake. And I says, what kind of action? And he says, woman action, what do I look like? And I says, well, what do I look like? I don't arrange that kind of thing. <laughs> then he calls me a jerk, says last guy thought he's a jerk, he's dead now. So I don't say nothing. And then he says, geez, I'm going crazy out there at the lake. Well, what this guy look like anyways? Oh, he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. Uh-huh. 
the funny looking kid. But thanks for calling her in. Sure. Looks like she's gonna turn cold tomorrow. Cold? It's already cold. <laughs> Freezing cold. Right? He said it's gonna get cold tomorrow. Then what is this? Chili? <laughs> Nippy. <laughs> Little crisp. Not even close. Outside. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's definitely a million dollars. That's definitely an M. See, with that much money, he can buy a new face. That's 40. That's 80. He need to get that looked at. It's more than a flesh wound. You know what he about to do? Bury it. <laughs> but the reason why he, but he took the 80 out so him and his guy can get the 80 and then... Look at all that blood. They're not gonna even remember where he put it. Right, you don't have a marker. What if it snows over? That's, that's, <laughs> he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you be out there forever. He's real stupid. Because they said it's going to get cold. Right. Well, colder. It just seemed like it all hit him really hard. His wife dying. His wife? Linda. Who? He didn't, he never. No. Dip. Linda's fine. You should call her. Jeez. Damn. Well, he said leukemia and everything. He definitely had predator vibes. <laughs> so he came over there. He was like. Yeah. Even from the phone call, though. Oh, calling her like at 10, 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are probably fake VIN numbers. Uh-oh. The crime I'm investigating. The perpetrators were driving a car with dealer plates, and they called someone who works here, so it'd be quite a coincidence if they weren't, you know, connected. Yeah, I see. So, how do you... Have you done any kind of inventory recently? The car's not from our lot, ma'am. <laughs> but how do you know that for sure without doing a... Well, I would know. I'm the executive sales manager. Yeah, he would know. I'm cooperating here, and there, uh, there's no... Uh... Mm. A d a d um. Sir, could I talk to Mr. Gustafson? Uh, oh, he's. She won't talk to Wade. If you wanna, if you wanna play games here, I'm working with you on this thing here. But okay, I'll do a damn luck count, sir. Right now? Yeah, right now. You're darn tootin'. <laughs> darn tootin'. What? I'm sorry, sir. Ah, oh, what the Christ. Ooh. Uh-oh, the bed numbers, the bed numbers. For Pete's sake, he's fleeing the interview. He's fleeing the interview. She was going to sit there and wait for him. <laughs> he left. It might be a big problem. I'm pregnant. Huh? Look how he watching the TV. You're the father. You could have my truck. I'm taking Sierra. We split that. How the fuck do you split a fucking car, you dummy? I'm taking that fucking car. That fuck is mine. Look how much you got. Fucking asshole. You know, I've been listening to your fucking bullshit all week. Are we square? Are we square? Uh-uh. Not him. Oh, he done up the stakes. Oh, it's not over. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, I hit him right in the face of the neck. It's over. There's a car, there's a car. Whose car? My car, my car. The Sierra. Okay, you're careful, Margie. I'll send a couple cars. Oh, no. Oh, this is where the cookie crumbles. She should not do that. She should not do that. You said she shouldn't do that. She on her way up. What's that noise? Sounds like a saw. That's what. Prince thought it was like a car on or something like that. 
like an engine, but that's what it sounds like. Yeah, you're gonna need that. Get that out. I think you need to hold your breath for this one. I don't know what that's gonna be. I know. I don't wanna see. Oh, it is, I think. Oh, no. I was just about to say it sounds like one of them feeder things. That's exactly- That's disgusting. Okay. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, it's a foot. Get him. So that was Mrs. Lundegaard on the floor in there. And I guess that was your accomplice and the wood chipper. And those three people in Brainerd. Hmm. And for what? For a little bit of money. It's all, always the money. Could you open the door, please? Yeah, yeah, just a sec. Just a sec. Bill, wait. No. Oh, he's still trying to run. I love you, Margie. I love you, Norm. All of the day's work. Two more months. Oh, man. Wow. It hit a little different knowing that it's a true story, huh? Yeah. I can't say yeah now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that so was a you think? It's a crazy mm. story. Like I feel like like ultimately this dude got himself in a in a in a pickle and he couldn't find his way out of it. Like hell of a pickle, yeah. But that was the thing. It's like I So I wonder if if the cars were illegal or if you know, because typically a dealership, like a, a manufacturer, that's why GMAC was calling, like a manufacturer will front you the money to a dealership, like depending on what type of like mm -hmm. dealership they are. Mm -hmm. So if it was GMAC and they financed the entire lot for him, they basically are fronting the money for the lot. Yeah, the 320. Yeah. So that's why I'm just like, did he give these cars away? Did he? Because I'm like, what, like, like, because... Like where did the three hundred and twenty go? Like who who got the money? Because obviously he he need money, so obviously it didn't go in his pocket. Well, they yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I guess that's where I'm a little bit confused. Yeah. at. is and because... if anybody knows anything about this story, they would have to fill me in because I've been thinking thinking about that too. It's like then where did the money go? Did it? I mean, obviously, did it did it go into the into the owner's pocket? Did it go into Wade's pocket? And he just doesn't know it yet? I feel like it has something to do with... I mean, I don't know because Wade was the owner of the right. actual dealership. Right. So... And Jerry is doing something underhanded with the cars, trying to maybe sell more cars or... Sell them illegally, maybe? But that that's the reason why he wouldn't be able to produce a VIN number for him or they were hot cars or... I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not really understanding, yeah. like... We'll have to look at the, the actual story. Now, Where the cars came from. Especially like, knowing that this is a true story, I would have to kind of like read to, to get like an understanding as far as, because obviously he needed the money, so he went to any length, and this is crazy with Jerry and the whole story, is that he just went to any length to get some money, and it just kept getting worse, it kept getting worse, it kept getting worse, and then you start seeing the body count, mm -hmm. and pretty much people losing their lives just over something, what Jerry did and what he pretty much concocted in Fargo, when he went out there to, to to put this whole thing together. Some kind of way, he probably had a hand in like getting his hands on that money, which was why he couldn't make up for it or why he was trying to... He had to have Maybe, stole and, the money and, and then... It. Like, you Wade know. probably didn't even realize that it was gone because it was something to do with the accountant, like which is why they didn't want to get the police involved to begin mm -hmm. with. Because I think a regular person, somebody's whole wife gets kidnapped like your first instinct is to do exactly that mm -hmm. so the fact that they didn't want to get the police involved well, like jerry didn't and he kept he kept trying to convince wade like no 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 this is what we're gonna take care of 
you know, they're real adamant about we can't get the police involved. So when Wade was like, I'm going to call the police, he's like, no, 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 no. You know, they might kill her if, they, if we call the police because it's a ransom. So he had to have gotten that money. It had to be you know? Jerry that got that money. And then he couldn't figure out a way to, to cover for it, which was exactly, why. Exactly, basically. Yeah, right. because when you sell that car yeah. you have to pay the manufacturer yeah. back and then he and then <laughs> and then you know he got the house and all this other stuff so it, it ain't no telling what he did with the money and and now it's starting to come back on him you know you what know? maybe that's what it was maybe they did it maybe it's like maybe because they financed that's probably what it was they probably financed the the lot for him to have those cars so he never actually got the money, but just like he he gave that car away to them, mm-hmm. he probably did that like multiple times, which ended up in the three hundred and twenty dollars, which was why like GMAC was like, we need the VIN numbers on the cars that you sold, and mm-hmm. he couldn't produce them because he gave the cars away. Yeah, and ultimately he had to pay that money back, mm-hmm. which really he wouldn't have had like physically had the money for that. Right. Because he didn't sell the cars for him, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Mm-hmm. So that's probably what it was: is that he he really didn't have like physical three hundred and twenty dollars. He never yeah, had his hands on up. that money. Yeah, it's just he just up. gave away the cars. Yeah. But probably I'm like, what was he doing that he was giving away cars though? Yeah, like, but that amount of cars too. Yeah. So I, yeah, like I said, I would have to watch read like actually read it to kind of get like a better understanding too. But. Just this whole story, it, 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 and it just spiraled out of control from the beginning. I was just like, when they went into the house and then they took her, and then just the way they had, how he was acting, it was like, he literally had like a, he didn't even care. It was almost like he was so concerned about the money and getting the money. He didn't care about his wife. He didn't care about Scotty either, because he was lying to Scotty when, 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 when Scotty was sitting in his room crying and just distraught. Like, yeah. Like, his whole thing was just worried about getting the money, and he was going to say whatever he had to do. And do lie his way out of it to do it, you yeah. know. Yeah. So I ended up like I wonder if they like found the money like when summertime came around and everything melted in this <laughs> found briefcase, a briefcase is sitting here in the middle of, like nowhere. Yeah. And whoever was mowing the grass was like la la la. Yeah. Let me N- see. Nine hundred and twenty k was left over. What's in this you know? thing on box? You know. Yeah. And they opened into this whole big briefcase full of money. What an eerie story! Like for him to even go to that length to even be okay with somebody. You, you know, even putting together oh a plan gosh. like this to to fake this whole plan to kidnap his wife mm-hmm. to try to uh, extort the money out of his out of his father in law. Right, right. That's what's crazy. That's crazy. Because even was telling, he was like, he has money. He has a lot of money, and so it was like this. He he did. He was gonna do whatever he had to do. And and I knew that it was all over with when Wade was like, nope. I'm going to take this briefcase. I'm going to go and get her back. And I was like. Yeah. Well, I think they were. He asked for a million dollars, which is why he was so adamant on getting mm-hmm. that money was because he was also going to get compensated mm-hmm. as well. Obviously, he was going to take the million and give them 80 and and be done with it and then and have then, a whole bunch of money. And then he left. still had a 320. To, yeah. To, to pay off. Right. Right. <laughs> and then still have money left over mm-hmm. for himself. Like. And see, that's like and, the and, ultimate and, and, greed. Right, that's what I'm saying. And then the whole thing with him trying to do the parking lot for seven hundred and fifty thousand, like that didn't work either. No. Remember, he went to them with that proposal. Yeah. So it's it's just like one thing after the next. He's just trying to come up with with all of these schemes to get this money. That's had that had out of way than what it was out of his father in law. But I'm just okay that he worked for. I'm gonna have to go and look into this story though. Now I'm just it's interesting to to, to want to know and, and get the whole backstory to get the entire story. To get a, a good understanding as far as <laughs> the whole chain of events, everything that happened with this one, and, and they had like some some good funny moments in, in the movie too with the whole yeah yeah because the police officer laid like you see I said I'm like she's so careless but I'm like no nah, she really kind of was on it it was she was just quirky that, she was a little quirky yeah but at the end of the day like every you time said, I say that now <laughs> <laughs> no but but you're right like and, and from the jump she 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 pretty much. Knew what happened at the crime scene from the jump. She put it together from the triple like homicide. Yeah. yeah, with the footprints, it was two people, mm-hmm. two two assailants. You know everything. Like she put it together and she was on it all the way from the beginning to the, to the end. end. Yeah, as far as who she needed to go see, who she needed to talk to. From the moment she solved the case too, and then and then walk like I. And then at the end too, for her to walk up to the house, and to see him in the act of trying to get rid of. And the wood chipper. Yeah. That's gruesome. I know. I think I think what he was thinking is that at some point I'm finna just wait till the till it snows so the snow will just cover it all up. 
You know, like all the blood and stuff? Yeah. So he was, just, I mean, I guess at that point he was just going to do whatever he had to do to get rid of them. But I guess he was praying that it would snow over all of that. So it kind of would just kind of cover everything up, at least for the time being. Or he didn't think like literally, like he literally got caught in the act. So he, got was, caught in the act, yeah. he didn't think that was just bad timing in a in a crazy coincidence that yeah. she pulled up at that time. Exactly. Because otherwise, he, he probably could have got away with that. And that just shows you how... How hot on, on the trail that she was. Like, every Dang. single thing that she thought of, going back up to Moose Lake, like, everything that she thought of, she was, like, right on the money, spot on. Yeah. Every single time. This is a crazy story. Yeah, it is. This and, is a crazy story, but it, as crazy as it is, it's like, it's not, for me, I feel like it's not unheard of because I remember telling you, like, a case about something in regards to that where there was a lot of fraud activity going on a in dealership. a dealership. Yeah, yeah, and they were pocketing so much money behind that. I'm like, half of the people at the dealership probably got arrested or mm -hmm. had to come up with something. Something happened. And I'm like, when you have a lot of people that have access to money like that and and like him, the executive sales manager, especially in the sales manager position, you see how he was. Because he's he was... in the sales, so, so and, and he's the yes. executive sales director. Yes. So, he, so he's pretty much in charge of Inventory, <laughs> numbers, how much we making, how much we gonna sell it for. All of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that goes with the whole how much profit up. loss. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just I'm putting this together so and he's I'm pretty thinking much about the, it. So he's probably in the perfect position to Perfect. To he was in the do perfect what he was doing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. I feel like and again she said it perfectly at the end too. Like the model of the story is life is more is life is more than just about money. Yeah. End of story. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I got to look this story up, though. Yeah. All right. Great suggestion for a movie. And, like I said, we didn't know the names of all the actors in the movie, but when the movie came on, like, I remember him. Like, pretty much all the main characters in this movie we recognized. Even Margie's uh, husband at the end. Margie's husband, but... but um... Steve Buscemi. We, I recognized him, the guy that, that they kept saying looked funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. other guy that was shoving the foot down into the... I didn't recognize him. I recognize him. him. I just don't know where I've seen him at. Yeah, I don't recognize him, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, y'all. But, man, great movie suggestion. I, I literally was locked in on this movie the entire time since it came on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Horrible story, though. Yeah, right? Y'all tap in. Let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section below. I'm curious to know what y'all are going to fill us in with in terms of insights. I just want to know. So... Tap in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Absolutely. Smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. And if ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video. Y'all. <laughs>